Hi, this is Dan Lopez de Sa, and this is joint work with John Horton. Um, so this is actually uh, the intro uh, for gender essentialism uh, with unisensialism versus kind essentialism. So essentially, it's about gender uh, has a considerable bad reputation among feminist philosophers, and uh, justifiably so. But it has been often associated with views uh, that are uh, problematic. Um, in a recent book, relatively recent book, Charlotte Witt uh, presents a view on gender according to which uh, it is a feature that is uniessential to social individuals, in a sense that we want to introduce. Uh, and she claims that that view is not only not hostile to feminists, but actually useful in a way that we will discuss in the paper. So the purpose here is to present the notion of a feature being uniessential to a certain uh, individual. So this is presented in contrast with a more familiar idea uh, of a feature being essential to a kind. So here's a quote, we can think about essences in relation to kinds, and we can ask whether a collection of individuals constitutes a kind that is defined by common and unique property or properties. An essence in this sense is a property that determines kind memberships. Now we think uh, that arguably this notion generalizes in the sense that uh, all kinds have essences in this sense, properties that determine kind membership. We don't think that this is particularly problematic. Um, but in any case, uh, she wants to contrast this idea of kind essentialism with an idea of a, a future being essential, not to a, as opposed to a kind, to a particular individual, a property that, a characteristic that makes an individual the individual that it is. And uh, that in turn uh, could be understood in at least two ways. One of which is much more uh, familiar than the other. The more familiar one being that of identity essentialism. Uh, the, the idea of a property that identifies a particular individual at different times and possible worlds, which is associated with the work of uh, Kripke. And that contrasts with another idea that she found uh, inspiration of in uh, Aristotle, of uh, unification essentialism, or uni essentialism for short, of a property that unifies a particular individual into what it is. So here's a quote again. The, for Aristotle, the question what it is asked of an individual substance expands into a question about the unity and organization of material parts into a new individual. Aristotle explains why a new individual exists at all over and above the sum of its material constituent parts. So to emphasize when a future F is unisensial to a particular individual, the very existence of that individual is generated by the instantiation of the future so that the, the, the entity is numerically distinct from any individuals that already existed and perhaps remain in place. And the examples that she submits are the examples that Aristotle himself used of the artifacts and biological organisms. So the idea is that the, those things are things over and above the sum of its parts and thereby they, there is a certain feature uh, in virtue of which that explains why those things uh, are generated. Um, and this is the crucial ontological requirement that we will critically discuss in our paper. Now, there is a, the, if a feature is unisensual to a given individual, uh, we have been talking about the, is the, the instantiation of the feature being what explains the unity of the new individual. Now, the, there remains an issue as to what is that does the instantiation instantiating and none of the options seem completely uh, unproblematic whether the, it is the underlying components or whether it is the new thing itself uh, so i'm here gonna stop for just a few seconds just in case somebody is interested uh, in uh, why none of the options is completely a problem is uh, unproblematic but be as it uh, may we will proceed in the paper being neutral in that respect and talking uh, of a feature being uniessential uh, to a particular individual. Good, thank you very much.